Hey, before we get in this episode, can you do us a favor? Will you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? We you ring that notification bell? And if you would, give this video a like. Well, enough of that mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the episode. Let's talk developmentally speaking, glow up, and connecting through wrestling. Hey everybody, I'm Morty. And I'm Brian. And on today's episode of Developmentally Speaking Presents Glow Up, we have, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, we have Matt Simber. Matt, how's it going? Um, well, um, not bad considering I had two major operations in the last 12 months, but I'm not doing badly. One was on my heart. And the other was on my what, Lynn? Wow. What? Prostate. Well, she won't tell me, so. No, what is it? Prostate. On uh, my prostate. Right. I, I think I conveniently forget that one. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, yeah. I would, too. So, um, I'm going to start off with... Uh, a question you've probably been asked a bunch of times in your life. What made you want to do a wrestling show? My God, that really takes to history. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, you're from Indiana, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, well, there was a fellow from Indiana who was very popular um, in wrestling he came to hollywood and he decided he wanted to get a show so he went to my partner at the riviera hotel in las vegas while i was in europe making a film and when i came back mr reckless said matt you gotta do this for me they want to spend five hundred thousand getting a series of shows I don't know who the hell these jokers are, but I like the idea of the show coming from the hotel. I just took over the whole hotel, and I think the publicity would be terrific. And wrestling is the most popular thing in America today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, would you take care of it for me until you get the first couple of years on the, on the, I said, well, you know, Rick, I'm really not excited about this because I don't think about wrestling. As a matter of fact, I was a high school wrestler, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that was a totally different kind of wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. And it was, uh, you know, it was only to help me get into college. But in either event, the point is that... Um, and he said, come on, you got to do it. He said, I'm not going to throw $500,000 into this imbecile from Indiana. <laughs> He's, he seems to know about wrestling, but how does he know about money management? Right, right. And is all the money going to go? Uh, I'm not running a charity here. I don't know if you know Rickless, but he was quite a guy. I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll at least do the pilot. I said, and then you could sell the pilot nationwide on a syndicated basis. And that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. And okay, here we go. Now I meet, um, what's his name, Lynn from Indiana? David McLean. I meet McLean who's a very likable guy, mm -hmm. very reasonable, very good looking. He looks like, I defined him once, he looks like the, the little statue on top of the wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> you know, when he puts on his, his, uh, um, his monkey suit, he looks really cute. And he has this great voice mm -hmm. and he, Stands wrestling. So what a perfect thing. He's going to be the host. Of course, he thought he was going to run the whole show. And that was okay, too. I didn't mind that. I wasn't really looking for any kind of um, credits on this. 
they wouldn't have helped me when I walked into Paramount with a picture. Right. So in either event, uh, we got into the pilot. And of course, when you think about women's wrestling, this is how I break down something. I mean, no matter how good you make women's wrestling, it could never be men's wrestling. Now, I know it sounds really bad to say in today's world, you know, but back in uh, 1985, the idea was, you know, if we're going to do girls, we need another element. We need something else that's a hook into it. It has to be entertainment, which of course it is entertainment, but we got to give entertainment in the in the form that the audience will, must be on wrestling will will appreciate it. So I started staging <laughs> the pilot, and they all thought I was nuts, <laughs> and. Um, Finally, when we started shooting and they saw what I was doing, they said, wait a minute. McLean said, you realize we'll lose the entire wrestling community by making fun of them with this and the whole. And I said, but I promise you that they'll find it entertaining, the girls wrestling and they do comedy sketches and I said you know of course comedy sketches really was an extension mm -hmm. how do you take a girl who's never wrestled who's never been an actress how do you make her do comedy mm -hmm. I mean comedy is the hardest thing in the world to do as you two guys probably know <laughs> so what happens he gets with the distributor, who was by far, by the way, another Israeli, and Rick was doing a favor, giving him the show. Mm -hmm. Rick was big about doing, getting the, uh, the, the people who escaped from Israel to America jobs. So now we were on to it. When we got ready to start shooting, they went on their own. I was in Las Vegas at the hotel. They went to Rick's office in Beverly Hills, the distributor, uh, McLean, and another guy who does just the com commercial uh, stations. Mm -hmm. And they sat and they told Reckless you have to fire Matt Simber because Matt Simber is crazy in what he's doing and he doesn't understand wrestling. He will totally ruin the show. <coughs> so, excuse me, of course, Rick in front of them picked up the phone and said, Matt, they want me to fire you. And they were sitting in the office he put him on the speaker, and I said, Rick, pleasure, please, do me a favor, fire me, and let me get the hell out of here. <laughs> of course, Rick wouldn't think of doing that. So naturally, they had to live with me. Exactly one year later, those same three guys went to see Rickless in his office in New York and apologized profusely mm -hmm. when they saw what a smash hit. I mean, this show opened in a test run on three stations in September. Three stations, a couple in the Midwest, one of them on a coast somewhere. And by January, they had over a hundred station that's crazy it just spread like a wildfire wow and and when you look back now when i run into people who i see 
And they said, you did glow? I said, yeah, because I never put my name, not my real name, on the show. Mm -hmm. Okay? I wouldn't dare do that. I didn't want to take, take all the responsibility for this crazy, ridiculous show. Mm -hmm. But it just was taken really unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the whole show came about. And of course, once we passed the second year, the start of the second year, McLean, who's still, and of course, you know, McLean was wonderful. He was a great host. I could hit him with pies. I put, his office was a phone booth on the Sunset Strip. <laughs> Wait, okay, all these things. I mean, and you know, it was like, he really didn't realize how funny he was mm -hmm. or how he really caught on to the, he, it just drove him crazy. He had to be the boss and he had to, and he, so he took off. And I guess he thought that was going to ruin the show. But all I did was go out and cast 25 or more girls. And we made the second season, became bigger than the first season. So, and of course, and of course, all he's ever had are failures. He's got one backer who put up his money, put up her money, um, and the thing failed. Then he had another show, and that failed. Then he had another show, and then they were trying to do what a piece of what Glow was, but they never got the handle. Mm -hmm. They never got it right. Yeah. In I, any event, after four years and the show was a smash hit, I quit. I said, Rick, enough is enough. Now let me go back to movies, please. Mm -hmm. And I did. But I have to tell you that, believe it or not, I grew attached to these girls. Mm -hmm. There were some of them who had never been in front of a microphone, had never been on a stage, and they were doing comedy like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was the technique of getting them into it. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to make something special out of them. I took each one of their characters as they normally had mm -hmm. and just heightened it a little bit and got them into the feel of doing the comedy mm -hmm. because comedy calls were enormous timing. Mm -hmm. And you know, they learned the timing. And there's a handful of them out of 34 steady, 35 steady girls I would say 22 or 23 of them became real masterful at being able to do comedy. Mm -hmm. So much so, they went on shows on TV. And every time they went on, they brought the crowd with them. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing success. I'm sorry, we just had to quit. I had to stop thinking about me. You know, I said, uh, now I have to tell you, all these years have passed. Don't you think I've got three films that I made 25 years, 30 years ago that are still huge hits, that still play all over the world? The only thing anybody remembers about me is Glow. <laughs> Everywhere I go, they go, you did Glow? Wow, and I say, oh my God, yeah. I, I can't, I can't escape it, you know. Yeah. But in either event, I'm very proud of those girls, and I'm proud of, of uh, McLean. McLean was doing one to one time. I did a thing with McLean, where, you know, he was always the one that was cheating the girls out of their money and whatnot. And one night he was doing a show and I had him on a staircase. 
that went right out into the street onto Sunset Boulevard at night, okay? And he was doing this thing where he, he was beating them for money or whatever. And he finally went outside. The girls chased him outside and they started tearing his clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> and he was standing out on the strip on a Saturday night in his underwear. <laughs> and he went right. And, and you know what I liked about him was that he went right for it. Mm -hmm. And of course, he never forgave me because he always wanted to show that the girls would be as great as the men. And they were going to do a wrestling show that was the best wrestling show of all time. And I, at one time I sat with him, I said, listen, fella, you can't take a man who can leap out of a ring and do a swirl and fall and do, there's just no way that they could be more or as equally exciting as the men. The men just have it. And you know, I never watched that much wrestling, mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden I noticed that they were picking up stuff from us. Mm -hmm. They were suddenly taking the the cameras into the locker room. Mm -hmm. They were all of a sudden, and of course, we always ended the show with McLean talking to the boss of the WWE, and it was always insulting. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, that's the history of Glow. There's a lot more. But, you know, when the last day came, Rickler said, Matt, instead of just shutting the show down, you want to do a movie? I'll give you the money. Do a movie on GLOW. I said, Rick, I'm going to Paris for two weeks to unwind. I'll get back to you another time about GLOW girls in Paris. Because if you know what Glow Girls did to New York, you would not believe. You would think the best rock stars in the world had arrived and NBC put them at the fanciest hotel. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. And every, I'm open for questions, guys. And every, every Glow Girl that we've talked to has the highest regard for you. They always speak so positively of you. And, you know, they always said that we needed to reach out to you. And I'm glad that we did, and I'm glad we set this up, you know, because you you guys, it, Glow almost has like a cult following. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, when YouTube yeah, came yeah, it around. It really was. You know, I was very good friends with the manager of the New York Mets, who had won, who had won the uh, World Series. And I guess in 1989 or 88, um, no, not 1999, 1989, I think they wanted. And they invited my children and I to come. And he was dating Rickless's secretary. And they were sitting in the coffee shop one day, and I came over and said hello to him. And I knew him for a while, he's a terrific guy. I can't think of his, his name was Johnson, but he was a terrific, terrific manager. And I walked over, I sat down, and he said, Matt, you won't believe it, but every Saturday at 11.05, <laughs> nobody leaves the locking room to go out and be until they see the opening of Clo <laughs> and the ending and see he said they gotta watch it. That's so and cool. the glow for us. And then Rickless himself never watched the show. He never saw the show. And he says he was in a cocktail party in New York City with the fanciest, you know, New Yorkers and all of them all they talked about was Clo. What Clo <laughs> said. And then, of course, if you asked anybody, you watch, oh, no, I don't watch Glow. Sometimes I just skip around the 
uh, the stations, and I picked up something. But they were fans. Wow. And they're fa and it shows now. Mm -hmm. You can't believe these girls. I still stay in touch with me. Mm -hmm. They write to me and they tell me how they they get this guy and they go to this uh, festival and they go to that mm -hmm. and they were invited to Japan and uh, Philippines and London. I mean, it, it was a great thing that happened. Absolutely. You know, and they all found a way to make a living. Oh, yeah. Yes. Which I, I was really happy about. They sell their t shirts. My wife, my wife, who you just talked to, is a senior vice president of Paramount Pictures. That's who you just talked to, okay? And I've been married to her for 22 years. Wow. And she. She said, you know, I don't believe, she said, but she went to one of the festivals. We had a, the one in Vegas, they were giving away awards. We went and it was unbelievable. She went to the, where they were set, and she bought a t-shirt from everybody there. That's awesome. You know? <laughs> it was like, and it was a fabulous, fabulous thing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and she is sophisticated as she is, oh, yeah. you know. When I mean, she controls every show and syndication, and part, and she always says, "It's the glow." And he, she was in shock. One time, I was doing, they had a film of mine called Hundra, that was being premiered in, 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 um, uh, in uh, San Francisco, and. The film was called Hundra, and they had the Today Show sitting there for the day that it was one they were interviewing me about the film. And the cameraman on the show, on the Today Show, he said, you're Matt Simba. You did glow. <laughs> you know? and, she, and she almost fainted. And she gets this, she gets this all. Now, here's the irony. Glow is going on CBS. That's right. Now, he got lucky. He got lucky. He got whatever. But he he got this woman who puts money on all these shows. And, of course, it flops. And he keeps it going. And he keeps it going. And he keeps it going. You know? And I, I guess the poor kid wouldn't know. He's not a kid anymore. He's a young man. But he, you know, he, uh, well, he's got to do his thing, whatever. The show is called Wow. What? The show is called Wow. His yeah. show is called Wow. Wow, yep. yep. Which, I, which, which I gave him that name. I said, you know, if you do a sub show, I told him this years ago, you ought to call Wow Women of Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And he stole it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for him to send me a check for a little royalty. Yeah. Uh, but I can wait. Yeah, but I guess bucks are hard to come by in that field. Mm -hmm. But he was he was a typical kid mm -hmm. that had a dream, and the dream just could not happen. You could not take those. You could take those girls. And make stars out of them, mm -hmm. but you had to give them another dimension. Mm -hmm. You had to really go. You, there, there's a lot of things they lack in the wrestling, but they're good. But over the years, I have to tell you, uh, women's wrestling has gotten progressively better, mm -hmm. but it's not men. They can't do what. Those guys, when you watch them, and I'm not a great fan of wrestling, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, when you watch those guys, they are sensational. Mm -hmm. They're great athletes, all of them. And, and, and of course, listen, you got to love them for what they do. Mm -hmm. They keep the audience going, mm -hmm. and they're exciting. It's yes. part of America's imagination, I think. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, part, yeah. it's a part of our love of heroes. 
Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. it, it's a it's a Marvel movie played out live in front of people weekly, is what it really is. That's that's how I've always. That's probably true. Yeah, because it, it's it's good versus good. evil, and uh, that's and very good. Pe- people surprise people doing things that they shouldn't be able to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, jumping over the top rope to the outside, landing on a couple of people, and then standing up and, you know, I'm okay. You know, like, people should be <laughs> able to do that. Isn't it unbelievable what they do? I mean, yeah. they fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally fly. And, they, and you know, some of them really get hurt. Mm-hmm. Yes. They overlook it, and you got to hand it to them. And I have great respect for them. Yeah. I always had respect for them. Mm-hmm. I just never was a great fan. Right. <laughs> so you were talking earlier about, um, you know, how you added comedy. Uh, I, I have to say that, you know, I've been in wrestling for 12 years, and I've always been a comedy-style wrestler. That's that's what, I, what I've done. But I have to say I love that there's almost a... Uh, there was kind of like a hee-haw feeling with the, the skits that you guys did back then. Sure. And, and, and I sure. think, yeah. And I think that that, that really, like when I watched the episodes, you know, that was such a good hook mm-hmm. to, to have. Um, when we were talking to some of the, some of the girls that were talking about, you know, I always asked them how, how they got their character. And every single one of them told us the same thing that Matt gave them their character. So my question, next question for you is, do you have a process for picking or creating the, the characters that you gave them, or was it just, or did it just pop in your head naturally? Because I can tell you those gimmicks that you gave those women fit so many of them perfectly that it, it, you, you have a, you, I know you said you didn't like wrestling, not a super big wrestling fan, but you definitely had the the um, the tools to be an amazing wrestling booker because the characters that you created are remembered forever. Mm-hmm. So, did it come naturally to you, or did you have to think about it for a while, or did you just? How, how did you create well, those? You know, well, you know, most of them were my idea. Like I, I think uh, the heavy metal sisters were fantastic, mm-hmm. and of course, I I grew up in the Jewish part of of Manhattan. I'm an Italian, but I grew up among Jews in New York, and I love them, and they are fantastic. Mm-hmm. And when when it came to for the for the uh, girls uh, to do. The housewives, you know, that was a stretch for them. Mm-hmm. And we, and I said, you talk like this, and you come out, and you say, I'll smack a one, and I, and I gave them some of the talk, and boy, they picked up right on it. And people used to send in mail about <laughs> the housewives. Um, Ninochka. Ninochka was an idea, you know, that everybody, uh, I remember Greta Garbo playing Ninochka and with the accent and with the look. And I found a girl who, by the way, is an enormous talent, the girl who plays Ninochka. She's phenomenal. Uh, there's, there's a handful of girls in that group that are unbelievably, you know, and of course, what was great was that I was very strongly disciplined. I mean, when they came, I was mean, I was nasty, and they had to follow the rules. They had to go to bed on time, and they had to, they had to be their character every day from the moment they wo- woke up. There was no, oh, my name is uh, whatever, and I play this character. No. I said, you don't play that character. You are that character. You were a protector okay. of kayfabe, 
is what that is. That that, that it's the, the it, kayfabe yeah. is, it, yeah. and and that's something yeah. that doesn't exist now, unfortunately. And and but it's I like, I love that. That's what you like, were. It's like the girl that plays. Um, uh, it, she's the number one girl of, of Glow. The one who plays Hollywood. She used to draw blood for a living in the doctor's office. <laughs> she never was on stage. She never did a high school play. She never did anything, really. That girl worked so hard in all the preparation thing for her to come above it. And you know, she makes a living at it. Mm -hmm. She really still makes a hell of a living. Mm -hmm. And awesome. that was the end you. A good girl wasn't permitted to be seen having coffee with a bad girl. Mm -hmm. They were never treated like two characters that were part of a show. No, they were the show. And they were the characters. And if you came near them in the, in the mess hall at the Riviera, mm -hmm. they'd say, get the hell away from me, don't come <laughs> in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I that was the way it had to be. Mm -hmm. And that attitude went right into the ring. Mm -hmm. They just played the hate and the thing. I mean, it was really incredible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, once again, unless you have anything else, uh, we, I want to thank you so much for coming on telling an amazing story. We don't want to take too much more of your time. So I believe I'm going to wrap it up with one last question here and then... Um, uh, we'll, we'll call it a night. Um, if you have, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be for wrestlers. Usually I ask for, for wrestlers. Uh, but if you have advice for anybody that is trying to reach uh, a, a goal in life, what would your advice be? Well, it's the same in everything. Mm -hmm. If you want to play a trombone, if you want to be a stage actress, if you want to be in movies, it's always the same. You only live for that. Mm -hmm. You don't care about a husband. You don't care about the insurance on the car. You don't care about anything. You get the drive to stay with it and keep after it. From the moment you wake up every day, till the time you go to sleep. You have to keep pushing, keep pushing, and go to this interview and that interview, and you never stop. And you don't worry about having a family, about paying the insurance on the car until you really made it. You have to have that in your life. If you don't have that, my friend, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna make it. Well, thank That's you. just the name of it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on. If a glow girl ever calls you, I want you to do me one favor. I want you to say, you know, Matt Simba loves you. And they love you. Everyone we've Absolutely. interviewed so far, they speak so okay. highly. They're so, they never have a bad word to say. They thank you for everything that you do, that you did for them. They... They have so much love for you. Absolutely. For what you did for them. Well, they're terrific. And I got to tell you, I was never easy on them. <laughs> you know, I once saw in Atlanta, we were changing planes, going somewhere on the tour. And I saw a good girl sitting with a bad girl in the airport. And I screamed at them. And they got so embarrassed. <laughs> they went running off. And that's it. It never happened again. Wow. They live. They live for the show. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. It's fun because whenever I talk about it, I remember it all. That's In any event, have a good life, huh? Thank you. Thank you. You too, sir. Thank you so much. Have a great one. And good luck. Thank you. Ciao. Hey everybody, it's Morty. It's Brian. And thank you for watching today's episode of Developmentally Speaking. If you could, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to punch that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we go live or drop a new video every Monday. Well, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next Developmentally Speaking.